Hello there, you're watching The Breakfast News on Rajya Sabha Television. My name is Ashwarya Kapoor. Well, after Akhilesh Yadav triumphs in the SP symbol war, now the party and the Congress are poised to announce an alliance for the UP polls. Well, that is the big focus at the top of this hour. That and much more in this bulletin, starting with the headlines. Talks of a Congress Samajwadi Party alliance begin after Election Commission settles fight over party symbol in favour of Akhilesh Yadav. Filing of nominations for the first phase of elections in UP from today. ATM daily withdrawal limit hiked to 10,000 per day. Weekly remit uh, stays the same. Current account of withdrawal limits hiked to 1 lakh rupees per week. International Monetary Fund slashes India's growth projection to 6.6% for the current year following demonetization. World growth projection unchanged at 3.4%. World Economic Forum begins in divorce. Switzerland calls for governments to be responsive and responsible. Nitin Gadkari and Nirmala Sitaraman lead 100 member strong contingent from India. And a main suspect in the Istanbul nightclub attack arrested. 39 people from different countries were among victims of the attack on the New Year's Eve. Our top story is from Uttar Pradesh. Well, nominations for the first phase of elections in the state begin from today. And on Monday, the Election Commission laid to rest all the speculations around the fate of the Samajwadi Party symbol. The poll body ruled in favour of Akhilesh Yadav camp, giving it the right over the party symbol, the cycle and also its name. Now, there are talks of a possible alliance between the Samajwadi Party and the Congress ahead of the polls. Akhilesh's supporters celebrate after the Election Commission's decision favouring the Uttar Pradesh Chief Minister in the fight over the Samajwadi Party symbol. Election Commission has said that one side of the Mulayam Singh Ji says that there is no split. And the other side of Amar Singh Ki Chitthi is on record that there is no split of Akhilesh Group. So both things are not possible. So that's why we have to think about it and we have to decide on it that who has the government, who has the government, who has the government, who has the government. In its 46-page order, the Election Commission said the figures evidently demonstrate that Akhilesh Yadav enjoys overwhelming majority support. Samajwadi Party is our party. In Samajwadi Party, there will not be any doubt in the future. There will be a government of the government. There will be a government of the government. This is the government of the government of the government. And the government of the government of the government. अखिलेश यादव जी के पास पहले भी शल की साइकिल थी, आज भी है साइकिल। हम चुनाव आयोग के फैसले का स्वागत करते हैं। The decision coming a day before nominations for the first phase of elections in the state begin. A body blow to Mullaim Singh Yadav. The decision coming a little over 25 years after he founded the party. With the issue settled, now the focus has shifted to poll alliances. Both the Congress and the Samajwadi Party hopeful of ironing out their differences. The Vanchit Samaj is Pichra, Anusuchi Jati, Alpsankhak. For their hit, if they have a good idea of Bihar, if they have a good idea of the Congress Party, if they have a good idea of the Congress Party, तो मैं समझता हूं कि समाज के हित में होगा प्रदेश के हित में होगा और जो कठिनाइयां आज पैदा की गई हैं भारतीय जनता पार्टी में विशेष रूप से उन कठिनाइयों का भी समाधान संभव हो सकेगा ये पहले जी ने भी कहा था और मेरी कोई राष्ट्रीय तय से बात नहीं हुई है लेकिन ऑल ऑप्शंस आर ओपन द बीजेपी हावेवर क्लेमिंग दट द इन फाइटिंग हैज वीकेंड द समाजवादी पार्टी जब मुलायम सिंह जी अखिलेश जी लोकसभा के चुनाव में एक थे तब भी बीजेपी ने 80 में से तिहत्तर सीटें जीती थी और आज उत्तर प्रदेश के हालात ऐसे हैं कि समाजवादी पार्टी पहले से कमजोर हुई है लोकसभा चुनाव के वक्त से ज्यादा कमजोर हुई है 
ज्यादा बिखरा हुआ है जब हताशा होती है पराजय की मानसिकता होती है हार को स्वीकार कर लिया जाता है तब इस तरह के गठबंधन की तलाश होती है और इस तरह के नई संभावनाओं के होती है जिस तरीके से पोस्टर्स में आ रहे हैं बट आदर ऑपोजिशन पार्टीज हैव वेलकम द इलेक्शन कमीशन डिसीजन अपीलिंग टू द मुलायम कैंप टू थ्रो इट्स माइट बिहाइंड अखिलेश टू एंश्योर द बीजेपी इज डिफीटेड हम बधाई देते हैं अखिलेश जी को और हम अपील करते हैं नेताजी से मान्य मुलायम सिंह यादव जी से कि ये देश का चुनाव है उत्तर प्रदेश का चुनाव नहीं है अब एक क्षण भी मत दे करें और अखिलेश को आपकी पार्टी बच गई अखिलेश को आशीर्वाद दीजिए और चुनाव के मैदान में कूदिए अखिलेश जी ने कई बार मीडिया में भी और हर तरह से उन्होंने बात कही भी थी कि अगर कांग्रेस और समाजवादी पार्टी मिल के अगर चुनाव लड़ेगी तो लगभग 300 से ज़्यादा सीटें आएंगी और अब जब चुनाव नज़दीक आ गया है तो कांग्रेस के हित में भी यही है और धर्मनिरपेक्ष दलों के हित में भी यही है कि समाजवादी और उनके साथ तमाम जिनका विश्वास धर्मनिरपेक्ष विचारधारा में है वो एकजुट हो जाएं और बिहार की तरह यहाँ भी भारतीय जनता पार्टी को परास्त करें Reports coming in say soon after the election commission order Akhilesh met Mulayam and took his blessings Uttar Pradesh will go to polls in seven phases beginning 11th of February Bureau report Rajya Sabha TV Well more news from Uttar Pradesh now the BJP has released its candidate for Uttar Pradesh and Uttarakhand assembly elections while well, 149 candidates have been decided for 403 UP seats which will include uh, Lakshmikant Vajpayee who is the former Uttar Pradesh BJP chief and party's national secretary Shrikant Sharma BJP has also retained a sitting MLAs Sangeet Som and Suresh Rana who were both accused in the Muzaffarnagar riot cases while well, the party's the CEC will meet again today to announce names of more candidates Meanwhile BJP also announced 64 candidates uh, for the 70 Uttarakhand assembly seats um, almost all the congress uh, turn cap coats have been uh, fielded by the party except uh, former chief minister Vijay Bahuguna who was not in the race now most of the sitting party MLAs have also been fielded in the elections all sections of the society youth women all sections of the society and people from all walks of life advocates engineers technocrats sabhi logon ko isme jodne ka prayas kiya gaya hai more news from uttarakhand well congress vice president rahul gandhi took a dig at prime minister narendra modi's decision while addressing his party workers in rishikesh in uttarakhand on monday well, rahul gandhi said that the prime minister should show the same promptness on one rank one pension that he had displayed while announcing the demonetization move Here are all the details. Less than a month away from polling day in Uttarakhand, Congress Vice President Rahul Gandhi on Monday addressed party workers in Rishikesh. Rahul targeted Prime Minister Narendra Modi on the demonetization decision while accusing the government of hampering the autonomous functioning of the RBI. Policy bana to band kamron mein banao. Bina kisi se puche banao. Ek minute mein banao. Koi farak nahi padta. Ye do vicharadharaon ki ladai hai. Rahul Gandhi also criticized the Rashtriya Swayamsevak Sangh claiming that the right wing group did not respect and hoist the national flag at its Nagpur headquarters for 52 years after independence. 52 saal ke liye 2002 tak Nagpur mein RSS ke headquarter mein ye jhanda nahi karaya tha. जब सलूट लगता था स्वतंत्रता दिवस पर सलूट लगता था तो इस झंडे पे सलूट नहीं लगता था भगवे पे भगवे पे सलूट लगता था Referring to the controversy over the calendar issued by the Khadi Udyog, Rahul said Prime Minister Modi removed the image of Mahatma Gandhi who sacrificed his life for the nation. यहां सीने में तीन गोली खाए इस झंडे को यहां फहराने के लिए उसको नरेंद्र मोदी जी ने परे कर दिया कहते हैं इनकी कोई जरूरत नहीं है 
और नरेंद्र मोदी की ये फोटो आ गई Rahul also claimed the hand symbol of the Congress finds place in every religion while accusing Prime Minister Modi of spreading the cult of fear and threats. Uttarakhand goes to polls on February 15th. At a time when senior Congress leaders are leaving party, Vice President Rahul Gandhi has asked party cadre to stay united. With camera person Santosh Yadav, Navikram Singh, Rajya Sabha TV, Rishikesh. On to news from Polban Punjab. Well, after having joined Congress after hectic negotiations, now cricketer turned politician Navjot Singh Sidhu will contest from the Amritsar East seat, where his wife Navjot Kaur Sidhu is the sitting MLA. Now, remember, Sidhu had resigned from the Bharatiya Janata Party on 14th of September and was earlier the member of Lok Sabha from Amritsar. However, Sidhu was forced to step aside for Finance Minister Arun Jaitley in the 2014 general elections, who went on to lose that seat to Amrinder Singh. And uh, contesting his last elections, now Congress uh, State uh, President and former Chief Minister Amrinder Singh will take on uh, Chief Minister Prakash Singh Badal from his uh, pocket uh, borough of Lambi. Now Amrit Amrinder will also contest from his uh, traditional Patiala urban seat as well. And our correspondent Vishal Daya spoke with Captain Amrinder Singh contesting his uh, last uh, state elections on why he chose to take on uh, Punjab Chief Minister Prakash Singh Badal head on in his own constituency Lambi and why he thinks that Aam Aadmi Party is not a contender for the Congress in the elections. The campaigning for assembly elections in Punjab uh, is finally peaking up. Uh, we have with us uh, Captain Amrinder Singh, Punjab Pradesh Congress President and former Chief Minister. Why Lambi won and uh, why Lambi and Patiala both because being questions are being raised over two seats. They can raise, uh, people can ask any question. This is, I started my political career in, in Patiala and it's 47 years have passed and this is my last election and I want to end it from Patiala. That's my hometown and that is why Patiala. Lambi came secondary. First was Patiala which I've uh, applied for and that was because I thought that this uh, government for the last 10 years have done nothing but destroy the state. Chief Minister was the head. No matter who does anything, the Chief Minister is responsible. And I think he should be made an example of. If we can defeat him, at least the message goes, and God, by God, we are going to defeat him. The message goes to people that you can, nobody who gets elected can take the loin into their own hands to further your own interests and leave the people to just you. Uh, in, in Patiala, uh, the uh, Kalis have fielded uh, General G.J. Singh against you and uh, General says there is going to be a hell of a fight. Uh, so how do you look at that prospect out? I don't bother. The General can say what he likes. He's just an uh, upstart in politics. He knows nothing about politics. He knows nothing about Patiala. He can do what he likes. Uh, he is getting no, no support in Patiala. Let's come to Aam Aadmi Party. You've been, uh, you know, taking a lot of digs at uh, Arvind Kejriwal and Aam Aadmi Party in your public rallies. You made statements as well against them. Uh, why is it? Do you really believe that Aam Aadmi Party is a potent force? It's a third player? No, I don't believe it is a potent force. But you can't only talk about the Akalis when there's a third force in the, in the field. So you have to talk about both of them. And I say that they are as bad if not worse than the Akalis, because it's an anarchist party. It's a party with no experience. It's a party who never has any, not, doesn't have anybody who's ever been in government. You will make a total mess of the state. Uh, specifically, the question is on drug menace. How do you plan to tackle it? You say you will get it done within four weeks. Four weeks, we will break the back of this. This uh, one I am referring to is what they call chitta here. It's a synthetic drug made by people here. We know who makes it. We know who brings all the things. We know who, take, who stores it, who takes the money. Everything is known. It's a question of just taking action, and we will take action the day we come into power. That's finally, Navjot Singh Sidhu is part of the Congress. Uh, what role do you see for him? There is no problem. We look forward to it. And any, any number of people who come can only strengthen the party, not weaken it. His wife says there is going to be a strong role for uh, Sidhu in Congress party. You're the state president. What role do you see? Well, I don't know. That is for the Congress president and vice president to finally decide. But he is going to certainly um, be our candidate from Amritsar. And now a look at all the other election highlights in election wrap. Well, Uttar Pradesh government has a stop registration of its party's smartphone distribution scheme a day after the BJP lodged a complaint with the election commission calling it a violation of the model code of conduct. Under the scheme, the SP government was offering free smartphones to any individual above 18 years of age and has passed 10th class. 
The Election Commission has issued a notice of a model code violation to Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal for his reported remarks in poll-bound Goa, where he had allegedly promoted bribery. Now, the EC has asked Kejriwal to respond by Wednesday. At a rally on 8th of January, Kejriwal had reportedly asked people to accept money from BJP and the Congress, but vote for his party. Meanwhile, the Congress is likely to take a decision on forging any alliance with Goa Forward and a united Goans party in Goa today. Well, the announcement is likely to be made by the All India Congress Committee General Secretary Digvijay Singh. Well, the Congress has already announced 34 candidates for the 40-member Assembly seats. Meanwhile, an FIR has been lodged against AIMIM Chief Asaduddin Owesi for violating the model code of conduct in Uttar Pradesh's Saharanpur district. According to the complaint, uh, now posters of AIMIM have allegedly been uh, posted on the walls of uh, Power Corporation property, religious places and private shops as well. And time for a very short break. Uh, we'll be back with more news. Stay with us. The sacred relics of Buddha were unearthed in Piprava in Uttar Pradesh. Buddha. Buddhist monks from all over the world visit the National Museum to pay their respects. These charred bone fragments of Buddha are housed in the gold canopy gifted by the royal family of Thailand. So well, thanks for staying with us. Well, Prime Minister Narendra Modi will address uh, the second Raisina Dialogue in uh, the national capital uh, this evening. Well, the Raisina Dialogue ha held annually is India's uh, flagship uh, geopolitical conference organized by the Mini External Affairs Ministry in partnership with the Observer Research Foundation. Now, within a short uh, span, it has emerged as a much-awaited global conference in the international calendar. The strategic issues, including new challenges and uh, cyber security, will be deliberated during the three-day conclave. The theme of uh, the dialogue this year is the new normal multilateralism and multipolarity. Well, former heads of state and governments of foreign ministers and uh, senior ministers from a number of countries, uh, senior officials, Leading strategic experts and prominent foreign policy thinkers from around 65 nations are attending the event. Now, many of these will participate in a number of uh, panels, including uh, some concurrent ones, organized across a range of uh, sub-themes and include political leaders, diplomats, senior generals and admirals, strategic experts and thinkers. Out on some other news now, well, Finance Minister Arun Jaitley asserted on Monday that a consensus between the state and the centre has been reached on dual control of the goods and services tax. However, the 1st of April deadline for the GST now has been ruled out and has been deferred to 1st of July. Well, the 9th GST Council meeting headed by Finance Minister Arun Jaitley succeeded to break the logjam on the administration of goods and services tax. The entire taxation base will be shared between assessment and machinery of the centre and the states. All SSEs so with a GST turnover of 1.5 crore rupees or less than 90% of them will be assessed by the states and 10% by the administrative machinery of the centre. Well, GST turnover of above 1.5 crore rupees will be assessed in the ratio of 50 to 50-50 by the states and centre. There was a broad view that the 1st of July appears to be more realistic since it's a transactional tax it can be introduced uh, at any time also they felt that the industry and trade will have to be given some adequate notice interstate trade which is called integrated GST Whatever was suggested in the public domain by the union government did not have a role of the state. It was completely with the central government. Today we fought this question, arguments after arguments, 
and I'm glad to say we were able to convince everyone in the GST Council that we must have cross empowerment. That means state and center will both have a role in interstate trade. This was a big development. अलग अलग प्रकार के फॉर्मूले उस पर चर्चा हुई थी अलग अलग प्रकार के सुझाव भी आए थे और एक प्रकार का डेढ़ करोड़ की जो सीमा है वहां तक हॉरिजॉन्टल भी इसमें कुछ हद तक कह सकते हैं कि डेढ़ करोड़ की सीमा से नीचे 90 प्रतिशत राज्य देख रहे हैं और 10 प्रतिशत केंद्र देखेगा और डेढ़ करोड़ की सीमा के ऊपर जब 50 पचास प्रतिशत केंद्र और राज्य देखेंगे तो स्वाभाविक है इसमें कुछ हॉरिजॉन्टल डिवीजन का भी पुट है और वर्टिकल डिवीजन भी इसमें है And now, with the improvement in the cash situation, now the Reserve Bank of India has more than doubled the daily ATM withdrawal limit to ten thousand rupees, but has retained the weekly ceiling at twenty-four thousand rupees. Now, the limit on withdrawal from the current accounts has also been enhanced from the current limit of fifty thousand rupees per week to one lakh rupees per week, and it extends to the overdraft and cash credit accounts as well. Earlier, the RBI had increased the daily withdrawals uh, limit uh, from ATMs uh, to 4,500 rupees from 2,500 rupees just a day after the 50-day demonetization period ended. Now, RBI had uh, placed uh, limits on cash withdrawals uh, following demonetization of uh, old 500 and thousand rupee notes on 9th of November last year. The demonetization ended on 30th of uh, December. However, the NRIs and Indians who were abroad during the demonetization period have been given additional time to deposit their old currency notes. लोगों को थोड़ा इसमें बेनिफिट मिल रहा है, फायदा मिल रहा है, और अभी पैसे का जो अभी तक नोट बंदी का जो असर दिख रहा था, वो असर का कोई इतना मार्केट में पैसा फैल गया है, और अभी 10,000 करने से जो रोज की जो दिक्कत है, वो कम होती जाएंगी। एक अच्छा स्टेप है, जो पिछले दिनों कुछ क्रंच था नोटों का बाजार में उससे निजात मिलेगा और आम आदमी को भी फायदा मिलेगा साथ साथ जो बिजनेसमैन हैं जो करंट अकाउंट रखते हैं उनके लिए भी एक अच्छी सूचना है अभी तो पैसा नहीं रहता था अभी पैसा रह सकता है अभी पहले मतलब पहले मतलब खरीदने जाओ तो 2000 का नोट रहता था वो तो छुट्टा किधर मिलता था अभी मिल जाएगा छुट्टा Meanwhile, the International Monetary Fund on Monday cut India's growth rate for the current fiscal year to 6.6% from its previous estimate of 7.6%. Now, the cut in rates uh, comes days after the World Bank also deaccelerated India's growth estimates, citing the impact of demonetization. Well, in its uh, latest World Economic Outlook or a WEO update, the IMF said, in India, the growth forecast for the current and the next fiscal year were trimmed by 1 percentage point and 0.4 percentage point respectively, primarily due to the temporary negative consumption shock induced by cash shortages and payment disruptions associated with the recent currency note withdrawal and exchange initiative. Unquote. However, in 2018, the Indian economy is likely to revive to go back to its previously estimated growth rate of 7.7%. Meanwhile, uh, the global growth uh, for 2017 is unchanged at 3.4% and that of next year is 3.6%. And the World Economic Forum's 47th annual meeting opened in Davos in Switzerland today. Now, over 3,000 leaders from business, government, international organizations, civil society, academia, media and the arts are convening under the theme Responsive Leadership. Now, India has sent a 100-member strong team for the five-day annual meeting to hold discussions on the global economy. Union Ministers Nitin Gadkari and Nirmala Sitaraman, Niti Aayog's Arvind Panagaria, DIPP Secretary Ramesh Abhishek and Andhra Pradesh Chief Minister Chandrababu Naidu are among the prominent attendees from India. Now, CEOs and business leaders, including the newly appointed chairman of the Tata Group and Chandra Sekran, are also present at the event. Now, there will be a special session on India where the panelists will discuss the country's anti-corruption and tax reform programs. But other top global leaders in attendance at the forum include British Prime Minister Theresa May, Chinese President Xi Jinping, who will open the meet along with Swiss President Doris Luthard, Pakistan President Nawaz Sharif, Bangladesh Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina and Sri Lankan Prime Minister Rahil Vikram Singh. This is not just a Western meeting. One third of the participants 
comes from the emerging world. We have the largest participation ever from China, a very cordial welcome, the largest participation from India and from other BRIC countries. We are here assembled under the theme, and I would rather say the motto, responsive and responsible leadership. We do see a trend towards um, more protectionism. But from our point of view, we need a strong stance in terms of global trade, open market, free trade and fair competition. That could be a solution that was benefiting the people across the world in the past. And the economy will globalize itself certainly even in the future. Now, the main suspect in the New Year's Eve attack on a nightclub in Istanbul has been arrested. Now, Abdullah Kadvir uh, Masha Ripov uh, was arrested along with four others in the Turkish city of Istanbul on Monday. Now, the Uzbek national uh, Masha Ripov had mounted the assault on the, at the Riyana nightclub on New Year's Eve, which left 39 people dead. Citizens of India, Israel, France, Tunisia, Lebanon, Belgium, Jordan and Saudi Arabia were among the victims and dozen others were injured. Now, the Islamic State had claimed responsibility for the attack, saying that it was a revenge for Turkish military involvement in Syria. The gunman had arrived at the club by taxi before rushing through the nightclub entrance with a gun and firing randomly at the people celebrating the new year. And finally, on to some sports news. Well, Roger Federer and Angelique Kerber have advanced to the second round of the Australian Open tournament. Well, Federer made a winning return to the tennis court as he defeated Austria's uh, Jürgen Melzer 7-5, 3-6, 6-2, 6-2 in the opening round. Federer will uh, next face American qualifier Noha Rublin in the next round. Meanwhile, world number one Andy Murray, Kei Nishikori, Stan Wawrinka and Joe Wilfred Songa were among the other men to move into the second round. Meanwhile, in the women's draw, defending champion and top seed Angelique Kerber battled her nerves and faltered badly, but uh, she won before uh, overcoming uh, Lesia Surenko 6-2, 5-7, 6-2 to reach the second round. Well, that's it from me and my team in this edition of News. Thanks for watching and have a great day ahead.